Hi everyone, welcome to The Grind. Uh, we are on a new series going mm -hmm. through the Book of Esther. The Book of Esther. The Book of Esther. <laughs> uh, I gotta say though, this book is one of those books where it's like really entertaining to read. Mm. Very As a kid? As a kid, I mean, I enjoyed reading it. So I'm just imagining everything in my head, and yeah. I think it's one of those like rags to riches kind of story. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for the Hollywood interpretation of this. It'll I mean, be... technically, this could be 300, chapter 3. Actually, yes, 300. Xerxes is, Xerxes is uh, the king. You mean, oh, okay. So we could have Zendaya walking up on Rodrigo Santoro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that would actually look and sounds interesting. Warner Brothers, you're welcome. Wow. Actually, I was just thinking about because yeah, Pastor Betty did talk about 300. Yeah, that's yeah, a good example. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. we digress. But uh, <laughs> so one of the fascinating things about the Book of Esther is that I believe that it is the only. Uh, not I believe the truth is, it is the only book in the Bible that doesn't mention any God. God. Yeah. No God whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The closest thing that's anything related to God is fasting. fasting. Mm -hmm. So hmm. interesting to include a book like that with yep. no mention of God. But yeah, even though there's no mention of God, we see God at work throughout the entire book. So we're going to just do a deep dive in, in this because I think like the book of Esther, sometimes we've, there may be seasons in our lives we feel like, where's God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's he doing? For sure. So yep. can you guys describe a time or season in your life when you felt like God was absent and how did you respond? Oh, I think for me, it's during the transition between high school and college. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, just the fact that I was like trying to figure out, okay, so what should I do? Um, didn't really have good grades and stuff like that. I don't know why I'm disclosing that, but... Sorry, I didn't hear properly. What, what you say? I, I actually got a BMF. <laughs> you could yeah i mean during that time it's okay we don't judge yeah it's okay i mean grades don't make us i hope the people watching won't as well but yeah so um yeah during the time i was really trying to figure out my way through college as well and i was just i was just lost i mean i don't know what to do mm -hmm. i mean like i've always thought of being uh in in the industry or like at the field of music but then i was trying to figure out what else can I do apart from that but then math didn't like me so engineering was not really a decision that I could think of so yeah but yeah during that time I felt like I was really lost but I lately I've realized also that during those periods where I felt like I was figuring out what I wanted to do uh, it was just the perfect time when the Lord spoke to me and reminded me you know what I've already told you what I want to do with your life but then you keep on doing something else so yeah my stubbornness has uh prolonged it in a mm. way so yeah you didn't help yourself yeah it's okay neither did i <laughs> stubbornness yes because uh, yep. I, I think i just i just slept through that period doesn't matter because i'm going to take a nap there you go yeah um <laughs> no I, I i literally also just like shut down that was um that, that is that about sums it up yeah, like, yeah living living in a foreign country with no with no friends um, oh, man. means you don't really get up to much like mm. you don't go to church you don't do anything so that's what i did anyway um, oh. yeah so it's only after i think after i left that after i left australia mm. um which actually felt like leaving an actual desert um <laughs> did things go back get back on track i think mm -hmm. yeah so i'm sure there was a purpose behind that period of time mm. yeah I don't know why this conversation is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> because God is absent. God is absent. He's not present. Yeah, present. yeah, I know. Because yeah. even I feel sad thinking about what I was going to share. Mm -hmm. Because I think God is present, but because he doesn't answer what I'm asking for or seem to talk back, mm -hmm. that it feels like he's absent. So uh. I feel like it's been like in recent times where sometimes I, I mean, I know God is there. I know he's speaking. Mm -hmm. But because he's not addressing what I'm seeking him for, yeah. it feels like he's absent. Oh, you know how okay. some people, mm -hmm. like, yeah, they're yeah. present, but, you know, mentally, you know they're not there. Yeah. You um, mean me every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah that. <laughs> uh, so, that's, yeah, thank you, Rico, for finally recognizing <laughs> that. Uh, so, I was saying that sometimes it 
feels like God is present, mm -hmm. but not there. Mm -hmm. So, and I mm -hmm. think sometimes my response would be like, oh, "What's the point of asking you or talking to you yeah. if you're not going mm -hmm. to address yeah. this specific situation?" But then you and know, like I feel sometimes as well, like uh, this one is when you talk to somebody and you tell them like you know what you know sometimes i feel like god is not around and then the person will tell you like uh is it that way or maybe he's around you you're just not listening yeah and then sometimes i just uh, want the person yeah. to stop talking because i just want a, a, you know a listening ear yeah that's true that's true mm. the reality is that yeah he is um present Amen. and um we're just stubborn we're yeah stubbornness and maybe I <laughs> rico think also, yeah stubborn and also i think maybe like what we want god to speak mm. um dictates whether he is present or not oh mm. okay that's right? good yeah so yeah, yeah that's like, true if he acts this way then yes he's present if he doesn't act this way then no he's he's absent mm -hmm. and i think yeah that could be i think um accurate for most for most of us yeah but how, like do you guys know of anyone who has demonstrated a strong faith in God's providence and how it impacted their life? Can you define providence for the providence. for those of us who who don't know? Yeah. Um, providence uh, basically is um, the building just by North Point. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> where uh, many of some of our you know church members <laughs> call Providence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. <laughs> uh, basically provision i think mm -hmm. um pastor betty says providence has to do with god's character not just his sovereignty and power mm. so i think it's just his provision power does that is that clear for people yeah i think that is. sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a definition it is yeah. a definition yeah. but yes um yeah someone who's demonstrated a strong faith in god's presence i guess his providence and how it impacted your life yeah i think one of my <laughs> best friends that is basically his lifestyle oh um yeah because he 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 works for himself mm. doesn't know when work is going to come when jobs are going to come right. whether oh. you know next month whether he's going to be able to make rent you yeah. know but he he just lives by faith that god will provide and mm. you know he's been doing this for i can't even i don't even know how many years mm. but never once has God let me down even when COVID was like raging mm. and there was no there was no work going around for like videographers and stuff mm. um, he was still fine mm. yeah so yeah the way the way that guy just you know always leans on on God mm. and and believes that God will provide oh yeah. wow yeah I mean, I'm gonna be cheesy about this, but I would say my parents because uh, I I think they've they've had several periods where, yeah, um, like for example during during SARS, even for COVID as well, mm -hmm. uh, it it was a really tough season for them. I mean, like of course you you there are circumstances where they feel like they're really really in a pickle where they're having difficulties, but then they keep always reminding themselves that. Yeah, the Lord is going to provide. The Lord is going to do something, even though right now we feel or we see there's nothing happening. But then by the end of the day, the Lord provides at the exact time when the, when it eats, when it is needed. So I've 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 seen this. I've I've sort of um, lived through it. Yeah, lived through it as well. And sometimes I didn't even realize that that situation actually occurred to us as well. So yeah, I mean personally, um, if I were to to think about a person it would be my parents right. so yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think most of the people i know that's living by faith are missionaries those mm. who literally have no income and they're really trusting mm. in the lord i think those are some of the most faith-filled people because they're Amen. literally living day to day like there was someone that I met recently and you know she's a um, missionary uh and, and based in, in hong kong and she has a heart for hong kong but like she doesn't have um you know like a, like steady income but yeah, yeah you can see like she's one of the more joyful people that mm -hmm. i know, mm -hmm. you know sometimes people who like you see some people in hong kong right if they're like you know um stuck with finances or whatever you can see they're just really heavy you know, mm -hmm. yeah you know that this, the weight of the world's upon their shoulders but mm -hmm. literally this this person has 
no steady, mm. but yet still is filled with joy and faith. Yeah, so yeah. So I think this is an example of someone really trusting mm-hmm. in in God's providence. And what what's even riskier? Because like for example, we're talking about mainly like finance and stuff like that. Like what you said for missionaries as well. Sometimes they would even go to places where. Uh, it's life threatening. Yeah. So I mean, like, yeah, that's that's pretty insane. I mean, like for me, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I feel like I know sometimes when because for them the Lord will speak to them, right? Like yeah. they they feel like they're being called by God to go to that those certain places. But yeah. it's like for someone from the outside perspective, it's like that's pretty insane. Like, that's a crazy decision. And then, but yeah. then you would see like how God actually moves in their lives and stuff yeah. like that. It's so, like, are you sure? Are you sure you make the decision? Yeah. Are you, yeah. Sure? Are you sure? Okay. All right. Yeah. And yeah, so that is definitely faith really bring like pushing them forward mm-hmm. and, and helping them. So even though like God may se- seem absent, he's still at work in our lives. And so I guess the question is, how can we recognize the invisible hand of God at work in our lives, even when we can't see it or feel it? Like, hmm, that's a good question, Rico. I think you should answer it. I'm still thinking, <laughs> <laughs> still loading. Because the question that people will ask is, how can we tell that God is real? We don't see Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The world sometimes is in flames. Mm-hmm. Things happen to unfortunate pe- like yeah, unfortunate yeah. things happen to people so how can we confidently say that God is real that he is still working even in the midst of all of this wow that is a very tough question what about you Nathan do you <laughs> have any answer was, at the moment I knew that was coming <laughs> um, I I don't know if this actually answers the question but I like to remember the times where i knew god was at work Mm -hmm. Mm. um and then just hold to the promises that like he is he is faithful Mm -hmm. and will continue to show up Mm -hmm. even when even when i don't like we said when we don't feel it if we don't see it and then also recognize like our nature as humans is like we're emotionally fickle yeah yeah yeah. um like just because we, we're not feeling something or just because or we are feeling a certain way does not necessarily mean it's true the truth mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. emotions slide yeah. yeah um and like i i don't i don't care like how how emotionally regulated you are like we are all fickle in that sense yeah so, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah um and then i just looked up uh psalm 143 4 to 6 mm. it says like where my spirit grows faint and my heart is dismayed i remember the days of long ago and meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done so Mm. that seems quite i think quite fitting for anyone who's in that sort of position where they're like where's god Mm -hmm. god is around god has done work before and will continue to do so wow i like what you said like remembering because one of the things that the israelites struggled with is to remember like god has brought them out of egypt yep. god has provided for manna for them in the desert god mm-hmm. appeared to them in, in clouds of fire and and, and brimstone what? yeah sure okay <laughs> i mean just fire but <laughs> the thing is they still forgot even though they clearly saw so i think i like what you said nathan is to remember uh the things that god has done and to hold on to that yeah because if he came through then what makes you think he can't cam- come through again mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah. he is exactly present and <laughs> i think this is one of the kind of like the funny thing like uh, I, I find it quite funny as well like the fact that you know for for certain periods of time where god has redeemed israelites they he've he've give them something to remind them of like for example the seven stones where they cross yeah, 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 yeah. and then and then Wait, was it it's stones? as if Jesus, uh, God already knows like I know you guys are gonna forget it mm-hmm. so let me just give you these seven stones yeah. so I mean like for me as well like I like what what Nathan told told us like um, even though yeah there are times when we feel like God is not present during that circumstances mm-hmm. but then we've had experiences and I'm grateful for this as well because mm-hmm. for us I think for me personally my parents have always told me that there's no such thing as coincidences yeah and Mm -hmm. and everything is is aligned with god's plan and if we put it in that mindset we are sort of secure because coincidence is like 
when you think about coincidence, it's more like a 50-50 thing. It's whether, rather, whether if it's going to happen or not. Mm. And if it's, if we know that these certain things are things that God has planned for a period, there is sort of that expectation and the security that I feel like, you know, I know that God is going to do something at some point, even yeah. though right now it's really tough. And yeah, I mean, like in the most mundane things, like for example, we've had this this event uh, back in my previous church where we were supposed to have like an outdoor rally. N- uh, not a rally. It's um, like a, an evangel- evangelical event. Okay. And then the day before that was really pouring so bad. And then the next day, just sunshines and rainbows. So, I mean, like that's cool. Coincidence or not. Yes, exactly. I think not. So I think sometimes the coincidences uh, that I think some some well not gonna lie I think some Christians will make it seem as though it's a sin to think that you know coincidences <laughs> are you know legit. Um, yeah. And but the thing is the world believes in coincidences. Mm-hmm. I think that's a norm. Mm-hmm. But I guess I suppose if we think of it that way, it's like if everything's purposed by God, then I think it's just. There's God. no room for coincidences, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. is this just a matter of semantics and vocab? Potentially. Like are we talking about the same thing, just using different words to describe it? You know how like sometimes instead of pot bless, it's pot luck, they call it pot bless. So it's a coincidence, <laughs> they call it <laughs> God, God incidents. God <laughs> incidents, wow. Like, you know so how? so if you're going to be talking about these sort of things, like of course we don't, be, uh, if, if you take out coincidence as, as uh, uh, out of the picture, yeah. then how would you say that I don't know if you should go there, but like go free there. will versus, versus predestination. Yeah, and stuff like that. So how do you guys Ooh. think of that? Yeah, I'm out. Because <laughs> there's different camps. There's the uh, Calvinist and then there's the Arminist and, and then the whole like... Honestly, my position in this debate is to sit back and watch. <laughs> so this ain't no that debate. is my official curious, position. To be honest, like... I don't know how to how to go there, but I'm just I'm just thinking about that as well. Because like, if there was no free will, because I think there's some group of people who believe that a certain group of people they're going to die. So, but then it's just that Jesus died for all. What so that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. How is this group certain group of people is going to die no matter what? Mm-hmm. So, I still think that we are designed in God's image mm-hmm. and we've all been given the choice to choose to follow Jesus or not. Mm-hmm. I think in, oh man, Jesus I think he knows what you're going to you're going to do. But I think he never like writes it off like, you no. know, like tell mm. You know how like that's the whole like um oh, what's that? I'm just like, watching pet unravel here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, continue. No, I was just thinking, ah, oh, what was that? It's like you know those movies where you know what's gonna, you you know the outcome, and then you don't want to do that, and you do everything that you avoid it, and then you get there or something like that. that final destination, or like just oh, yes. being a parent, like when you see your child doing something that you know it's gonna harm them. Uh, of course, you try your best to avoid and tell them, oh, you shouldn't do this, but then they do it. So <laughs> that's. I can, see you the, so. I can see That's the, the life, situation. The life leaf from Rico. <laughs> That's when you kind of like the script comes out, the caption, I told you so. <laughs> just imagine at the end of the day, Jesus is just waiting for us and be like, I told, I told you, you so. so. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of my good and faithful servant, <laughs> I, told <laughs> I, told <you>. so. <laughs> I told you so. I told you so. Anyway, I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it is a good question because I think people wonder like, what's yeah. if everything is already planned out and, mm-hmm. and God has the has everything set for our lives, then what is the point of? But we have been given free will. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah. I think it's. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm always looking at it in the perspective of being a parent. Like for me, I would plan everything for my children, but then they still have th- their own decision to make. And right. Uh, they have their own way of thinking. Their own accidents to happen. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and uh, consequences that they need to suffer from. I mean, like, but at, by the end of the day, you always have a plan for them and, and you always want the plan to be good for them. And I think that's the same thing for God as well. I mean, like, yeah. um, his he's always purpose is to yeah. prosper you, not to harm you. So. I think there are certain things that do happen and... Um, and you need, and these things happen 
and what do you learn from it mm. then that kind of just dictates your choices mm -hmm. like do you pick yourself up from these choices mm -hmm. or do you continue and make dumb decisions mm -hmm. Because I know I've, I've made some stupid decisions in my life mm -hmm. And I think they teach me really quickly mm -hmm. To number one uh, I think I, I did something you know, And got into an accident And that taught me really quickly Like pet I need to value my own self That I'm not super woman So in a sense like Yes maybe You know God could have prevented that God could have prevented me from going through that path But the thing is If I didn't go down that, that path yeah. then i wouldn't have recognized the need to be aware of who i am and my i guess my capabilities and so i don't know like i could have saved myself pain mm -hmm. but then yeah. also i've learned a valuable lesson mm. so i don't know like when we get to heaven maybe like jesus oh what's up <laughs> can you tell me the original plan yeah can you tell yeah. me the original what plan for my original life plan? yeah what was the original plan for my life and how close was i yeah <laughs> This was the plan. You were somewhere there, <laughs> but I think this is—it's it, going to be a lot of effort to just wonder about the what ifs and what what nots, mm -hmm. because then you never make the move. And I think someone said that it's easier to move a, a moving ship than a ship that's just sitting still. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like, good. I'm just thinking also in like exercises when you do like the sled push like when it gets moving then it's really fast it's easy really easy to move it but the initial like ugh it's like really hard so mm. wow that was yeah. pretty deep yeah so I think yeah <laughs> destination I think God has a plan and mm -hmm. I think maybe there are different situations that he does like place in our lives but yeah. at the end of the day is how do we choose to respond yeah. to that yeah. so and also I, one thing that uh, one thing that stuck to me as well is that uh, in Pastor Betty's sermon she mentioned about like whether whether that whatever God's plan is will happen whether it's going to be with you or ah, without yes. you yeah. and I think that one really struck me hard because yeah. of course as much as I want to I want to be involved with what God yeah. is doing yeah. and the question would be am I doing it right <laughs> yeah. or am I doing it wrong yeah because the weight of his plan doesn't rest on a singular person yes exactly like, i think because that would be really poor planning yeah exactly i don't think i was a poor <laughs> the of the yeah. it's not it's not like because oh, arigana was on tv the other day it's not oh, like oh the one with the bruce, bruce Willis. Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's not like you know if he doesn't press the button that's it the world's going to end yeah so yeah even if you say no and god wants to save like a certain group of people it's like okay well let me just find someone else mm. so he always I think God you know how some people have backup plans I think probably God has like multiple backup plans yeah <laughs> I think the backup plan in the end he is the plan already like he knows who's gonna be doing it anyway True, so so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's just whether you want to get involved yes exactly, exactly. do you want to yeah. be a spectator yeah. Christian I want to get your hands dirty mm. I think in the midst of it all like it's to trust God's sovereignty yeah and I think yeah. it's yeah God's sovereignty is sometimes hard to trust because it's like god if you're sovereign then why this yeah right yeah can you make this happen yeah, yeah. but we have to trust his character we have to trust his sovereignty so we trust god's sovereignty we trust his providence we trust yeah. his character essentially we trust that he's a good god right that when everything when he's involved basically trust and i know mm. trust is really hard again when you yeah. don't see the person yeah like and sometimes i have a hard time trusting if the person is not going to show up so like if the person doesn't perform i'm not going to trust a person to do things so yeah here i here i am trusting a god who i don't see who i know has come through but sometimes it's like can you i don't know are you so how can we trust that god's timing is always right even when it doesn't align with our own desires and plans because mm. sometimes i feel like they're at different levels yeah yeah i think i'm just gonna go back to the same answer wh where you you mentioned about like what was it <laughs> yeah what did i mention Rico? yeah what did he mention uh oh it, it, it was in remember. my mind um oh remember. his promises sorry yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 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 i don't know why i just got lost anyway yeah like remind just be reminded of what god has done for you during the previous things that that you've been waiting and god has sort of uh how to say like like he came to that promise like like 
uh, there are situations where you felt like you were lost mm-hmm. previously, and then in the end, God has redeemed you from that, or you you got provided for that. So mm-hmm. I think I think just being reminded of those things. That's why um, I think it was Pastor John who always t- told me that it's always good to write down all of oh. what God or Jesus Jour- like journaling. Yeah, journaling, journaling is good. <clears throat> yeah, and and it will help you in the sense of like because not all the time will happen at the same time sometimes it will be even longer maybe it's a time where uh that suffering or that that situation is a time for you to be molded until the time comes when like the lord says okay you know what you're ready you can have this you can this it's like me like like for me for kids when i think about toys like there are toys where it gives you a warning like oh don't give this to children who are under three like you don't give that mm-hmm. to a one-year-old because they're probably going to be swallowing it oh, okay. so so it's the same thing i think i think for us like sometimes we 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 have these plans that we want for for us as well and if it's in line with god um we have to wait for the right time like uh knowing that okay you know what you're equipped for this or you are okay to have this then yeah that's what i think <laughs> Thanks. I think you summed it up. Yeah, no, much. I, I mean, I think it's 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 always better. Hindsight is always better because mm-hmm. um, yeah. when you're in it at the time and you're frustrated and you, you know you don't know where God is going with something, it's you know it's so easy to just go blah. And you I just want to flip the table. Blame, yeah, I don't trust Lord. you. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, well, like now, um, if I if I think about the last the last few years, like you know being stuck at home, not doing anything, and like free, trying to figure out where everything is going mm-hmm. um and i look at where i am now and i'm about to I'm about to move to england and you know all these little thi- pieces are like falling into place yeah and then that's so when i look at where i was in 2020 and where i am now that's when i go oh right okay <laughs> i makes, got you guys it makes sense now yeah. so I sometimes understand. i think we just have to go through it yeah oh that's good yeah um, that's true yeah, yeah. because and uh, yeah, we don't have a choice mm. sometimes, but to just go through it yeah. and then see what it looks like from the other side. Yeah, true. And I think also like just to remember the sovereignty of God is when things don't go well, don't take the wheel. Let God take the wheel. Jesus, Jesus take, take the, wheel? the wheel. Yeah, Jesus take the wheel. There you go. <laughs> like because sometimes for us, we we have these situations where we are so impatient to wait for what the Lord is going to do, and then we just make a move. Yeah. And I know that the Lord is going to do something at the end, but then you're just prolonging it because you're, you have to be like, okay, you did this, so you have to be corrected in this way. And then you have to wait again. So, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. It's fine. It's good. Um, I've lost my train of thought too. It's gone, but it might come back. <laughs> it might come back. That's good to know. Jesus, um, take the wheel. Oh, no. Okay. Going back to what you Nathan go. said, like walking, um, go through it. Yeah. Um, yeah sometimes like when you, when you go through it like i like what nathan said you go through it at the end you look at it it's like okay cool like it's worth it and there are some people that are still going through things yeah. and for me personally i feel like i'm still walking through the yeah, season same. and yeah. it feels like it's never ending it feels like i'm going to be stuck in here but one thing that a friend uh, uh, spoke to me about psalm 23 it's even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death um it's not even though i avoid even mm-hmm. though i run sometimes mm-hmm. you have to walk through it mm. and i will fear no evil Amen. so yeah it's i mean i hate pain <laughs> and i would love to avoid it i think everybody does well there are some people who <laughs> don't <laughs> but we don't <laughs> talk about them yeah <laughs> but i think my personality type is that i try to get through things i mm-hmm. try to get over stuff i try to plow through stuff mm. so when it comes to painful situations i don't want to deal with it i mm. just want to you know get get through it as fast as possible yeah but sometimes it's the getting through it that builds you to be stronger mm. i think Amen. like for example even like if we use working out right if you go through your sets real fast <laughs> that was in the, my mind yeah right now. the sets working aren't the, like the you know it's not going to work but sometimes it's the slow like burn that builds yeah. your muscles so yeah i suppose that's that that's how yeah. life works sometimes <laughs> that's how life works. sometimes you just gotta knuckle down and suffer <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to god 
I don't know why I'm laughing, but I'm crying. But inside. it's all, it's all, I mean, from personal experience, it's all worth it in the yeah. end. Yeah. Amen. You know? wow. yeah, yeah. So it is, that does take a step of faith to trust that God's timing is always right. Yeah. And, you know, Pastor Betty Pi- uh, quoted John Piper. She said, I will see to it that everything works together for good. Amen. Yeah. So, Cause yeah. like if I can just like take, for example, my, my move, right. I've mm-hmm. wanted to move to the UK for, Oh, ages wow. mm-hmm. right for years it's never happened and then in the space of a couple of years i get engaged i get married and he then i'm met going a girl in, and know. then i'm going to england and at the same time my sister is moving back to asia from france so that means like at least for my family like she's here to take care of my parents everything is if, in line yeah, everything is fine we are literally moving across the planet like in the same two weeks wow so <laughs> it's like tag team like tap your yeah, turn <laughs> yeah um so it would not have worked out this way had i just been like like flipped the table and just gone yeah true right? yeah so it's really oh, good man beautiful thing that is encouraging who knows yeah, the lord might look at me like okay patrina i see you your turn your turn <laughs> your turn to go mm-hmm. but yes turn to go your, anyways, um, it's <laughs> hard to see our story beyond the present moment. Because, mm. yeah, I think it's when you're stuck in your situation, that's all you see. You're not going to see beyond. And it, you, sometimes you just need God's strength to like help you see. Yeah. And so I guess to wrap up, like how can the assurance that God is present and working for our good impact the way we approach difficult or uncertain times in our lives? I think for me is more like personally uh, look at it in how God sees it. It just reminds me of that song, God, I Look to You. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yes. Like s- see the perspective of what God sees. I mean, like you never know. Maybe something that's good for you that you think is good for you is not what God thinks. PlayStation. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord, PlayStation 5. PS5, please. Yeah, no, but yeah, I th- like just looking at it in the perspective of god like what what does god see in this situation and if that decision that you think like you're asking from god is the right thing and the wrong thing it will change your perspective eventually so yeah see what god sees yeah yeah i need to trust like what god says Mm -hmm. and and like believe in it and just to hold on to it mm-hmm. and not try to speed things up. Mm-hmm. I think my struggle is I struggle to yield to God or in, to yield it to His will. Like, I just want to go, I just want to go. But sometimes it's like when you're stuck, I'm just like, uh. So I think it's really trusting in His sovereignty. I think, like, really what Pastor Betty says, Pastor Betty spe- speaking is like, trust God's timing, yeah. trust His sovereignty. Uh, and He will see to it everything works out for those who love Him. Amen. 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 Yeah. I think one of the things Pastor Betty said was God has positioned us where we are for such a time as this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think just think about it being part of God's strategy and plan for us to be where we're at. And we may not necessarily be able to control our circumstances, mm-hmm. but we can definitely choose to control or choose uh, we can control the way we, we respond. So yeah. we yeah. respond in faith, yeah. in trust, in worship. I think sometimes we need to make a conscious effort to do that. Amen. So, yeah. Yeah. Who knows wherever we are for such a time as this. So let's go. Let's go. Let's trust God and believe that all will work out. Yep. All right. Thanks for a good discussion. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. You're so welcome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It, it is tough. It is a tough topic, but I think it's something that we probably need to process. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for joining us and we will see you at our next grind. Bye. Bye.